Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. Welcome to this new section on the Constellation DX APIs. This is going to be an introduction lecture where we are going to talk some of the differences between the DX API version V1 and DX API version V2. First, let's take an example. Just think it of like any kind of traditional API, not the DX API, any traditional API. When do you have this version of V1 and V2? Normally, V1 will be the first version and then when you have some kind of feedback or if you want to add some more features, if you want to change the structure of the API version V1, mostly we will go with the version V2, right? Similarly, with the DX API version V1, we had set of APIs which has some kind of structures and then with the DX API V2, we have different set of APIs or same set of API enhanced with different structures. Okay, now visually we will look at the differences between the version V1 and V2. A journey to the center of Pega constellation. In this course, I specifically concentrated more on the constellation as well as the Cosmos design system. I would say it is a must for everyone who works with the Pega application because Pega's UI is evolving drastically and many organizations are already experimenting constellation. So this knowledge is a must have. I gave my best to share the knowledge in a more simple way so that everyone can easily understand. So I would say don't miss this course. Let's have a learning journey together. The first main difference is we are not going to call it as DX API V1, DX API V2. We are going to call it as version V1 as traditional DX APIs and version V2 as constellation DX APIs. Traditional constellation, we already saw in the previous lectures that the UI design system is going to be traditional UI design system which is section based and then constellation UI design system which is view based. So DX API version V1 more related to traditional UI system and DX API version V2 is more related to constellation UI system. The next is what is the use case for these V1 and V2? We already saw about the mashup. We already talked about the SDKs through which you can render the screens into another front end technologies by using the data from the DX API. So DX API can provide the UI metadata and then the front end technologies can use those data and present in their own user interface. It means it is not a Pega native interface. It is non native UI. So DX API V1 is mostly used with that. Also, we saw that with the Cosmos UI, we don't use the DX API, right? With the Cosmos UI, everything is again section based, the harness based. So just like how you develop an application for UI kit, you are going to develop an application for Cosmos, right? So DX API is more specific to mashup content where you want to integrate with third party front end. But with the constellation, it is already in place within the design system. We know that constellation is a react based application. So front end is already based on some other react based components. So definitely it needs to interact to get the process details, the case details, right? So the constellation APIs are always available, be it a native UI, which uses the Pegas native constellation design system, or be it another front end technology like an Angular UI. In that case also, we are going to use the DX API version. So API 1 is more related to mashup content, where version 2 is also related to native UI, Pegas UI, as well as the non-native UI. Okay, now let's look at the third difference. I have marked it as red and green because it has its disadvantage and the API 2 has its advantage. The reason is the API calls getting made. When you use V1 and when you mash up the content with a third party front end, they are going to make some API calls, right? There are going to be a lot of API calls when you make V1. For example, you create a case by post, then you get the case details, you get the assignment details, you get the action details. There are different, different API calls specifically for each small, small actions. But with the DX API version V2, with the constellation DX API, the number is reduced. It means like maybe you have one single API call that is going to retain you all the data. So reduced number of API calls is there with the constellation DX APIs. In the coming lectures, I will also demonstrate you by comparing version V1 and V2 in a more practical way. But just now get the point that number of API calls is going to be a huge difference between version V1 and V2. Okay, now the next difference is Version V1, what it does, it translates the UI from the Pega sections and harness, right? 
pages and views it just translate the metadata with version b2 it also introduced that hypermedia as the engine of application state what do you mean by that now let's take an example let's take a an user interface let's take any kind of website if you look at the website in the top navigation you have different different links right so with that link if you click it goes to a different page hyperlinks were available right similarly when you create a case the response also contains some kind of hyperlinks giving us the endpoints which can be invoked to get the details for example if you have different actions you get endpoints for each of the actions through which the component can easily navigate and then get the details again you will get to know when we look into it practical but just understand that you also get some links in the response through which you can also navigate to different endpoints okay now the next difference is again a disadvantage and advantage as we already saw the dx api v1 comes with a set of apis and version v2 definitely it will always be an enhancement of version v1 so pega also introduce some other rich set of apis some other additional apis additional endpoints you get with the dx api version v2 so we have a dedicated lecture for it we will look into the additional endpoints which we get with the version v2 and the final difference which applications can use this version v1 and v2 we already saw about that most suitable for the existing applications because most of the existing applications were built using the traditional design like you have sections harness right for those use cases you can very well go with the version v1 and when you are building new application when you are making an application based out of cosmos react the view based design then you can very well go with the version v2 I hope now you understood the differences between this version B1 and B2. Now I'm just going to compare both these and show you in practical how those differences can be justified. Okay, to start with that, I'm going to use the DX API version V1, and we already know that version V1 is designed specifically for the mashup kind of use cases where you will have different front end. I already set it up my React based front end, which is going to use the DX API version V1. so i'm going to use that as version v1 and for version v2 i'm going to use the lease application which i created based on the cosmos react which is version v2 okay now let's compare both these and just understand for this i'm going to use the create cases api and using that api i'm going to show you how those differences or how the structure is going to look and how the api calls are differentiated so here i have my two screens ready So this is the incognito mode where I'm using the React front end and the Pegas applications that is built over the Team Cosmos. So it's like the version V1 which is going to use. And then I also have this App Studio for the lease application which is already connected to the Constellation UI service and it is using the Cosmos React framework, the like Constellation application. Okay, now we have both these applications. In both the application, let's create a new case and try to see. what are the apis that getting invoked what are the dx apis that is getting called okay let me first start with the mashup i'm just revisiting it again so let's go to more tools developer tools go to the network and then straight away create a new mortgage request case we already know that the cases api is the first one that gets called so this is the cases api v1 cases and then what it does once it create the case it gets the case details by providing the case id again v1 cases and then it also gets the assignment details and finally it also get the actions details everything comes one by one we also saw the components that are part of the react sdk that helps with orchestrating all these api calls right so, okay there are different components involved that helps with getting all these four api calls that are involved with creating a new case that is part of v1 version now let's go to the v2 version so i'll just switch it to my v2 version and from here i could, i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to use this developer tools the network and then i'm going to create a new lease request case here what do we get only one api call it's not four api call it is just one api call it was just presented the page was presented already see there is one api call that is made okay now let's compare the responses between the v1 and v2 so if you look at this response have a heavy response here let me use the json beautifier put like this 
So I have around 400 lines, I would say. So now if I go to the version V1, go to the response, I don't want to count it because I already see this is the response which I get from the cases API. But then I also have other APIs, right? So here you will have some responses, some different lines of responses around 200. Then I have here around 90 and then yeah, this is another response. So you have different API calls and different responses and definitely the structure is different. Creating a case, there is only one API involved with version V2 and that has a lot of structure. Like it loads a heavy data. It provides a lot of details within a single API call. Whereas with the version V1, we make different, different API calls. If you look at here, both has advantage and disadvantage. That's what I would say. Because you make four API calls with V1, definitely some kind of network latency you have, maybe performance wise, little less, but if you have only one API, definitely performance wise, it's going to have improvement. But this API response is also holding heavy data. It's like it's loading every data within a single API call. Although if you look at a broader perspective, that may not be impacting all our JSON objects. So it will not look that heavy, but still both has a little small advantage and disadvantage. Okay, now this is the main difference, right? So you understood two main things. First is number of calls, definitely reduced API calls with the V2. And then the structure is also definitely different. Okay, now let's leave it out V1. Let's concentrate only on the V2. Let's go to the admin studio let's try to understand the different structures the response structures when you create a new case so i will just navigate back to the admin studio we have already authenticated so no no need to authenticate again let's go to the cases api you see here there are a lot of apis available if you see the version v1 you can very well look it from here if you go v1 api under the cases what do you get you have case types so case types is a different one let's go to the cases you get cases, get case, create case, update case, and then pages, actions, like very small set of APIs. But if you go to the version V2, you're going to have a rich set of APIs. So all these cases APIs, right? You can just read the description. You will find a lot of details over it. So what is the API that is behind creating a case? That is one of the commonly used API, which you will use for the DX APIs. So this is the one creates a new case that is post under the cases let's open that let us create a new case quickly so how to create a new case is just do a try it out and then there are two optional parameters which you can provide you can say which page to be rendered return view metadata for page name view you can also give the page name which can be rendered and then view type as well you can define if you want to get the view type as form or page but for now let's not give you anything later we will come to that make it both are empty and then let's create a new case. So what should be the request here? Definitely you should say like what type of case you want to create, right? Okay, first let's execute this and definitely you're going to get an error saying that first invalid authentication data. Seems like authentication is gone. So let's put the authentication back. I'll quickly do it. And then let's specify the request body. So in the request body, if you see, there are three blocks totally. The first is the content block. If you want to pass some kind of data, you can very well use this content block to pass the data, like the goal time, deadline time, SLA time, those things you can very well pass it out. And if you want to pass some kind of embedded data, you can very well do it using the page instructions. So with this page instructions, you can also append, you can also update some page and you can do different kinds of stops over this page instruction. And then finally, you can also have attachments to be passed to the case. Now for us, we are not going to do any of these things for now. So let's uh, remove all the sample data except the mandatory data, the case type ID. So what should be the case type ID for my lease case? I think I didn't create the organization as a life so let me go to the case and then just try to get the right class this is the class i mean studio lease request and let me remove this parent case id so i give a very simple request body just say that i create this case now if i hit this i'm going to create a new case type of lease request let's do the execute and i get the 200 so definitely this got successfully created a new lease request is created l60005 
So this is the new case and I am the owner. Now if you create the same case from the version v1, we get only the next assignment ID, right? We already saw that here. Like when you create a new case, you just get the ID, the next assignment ID, next page ID. That's it. Just to get only the four response. But now if you see here, now it gives you a lot of data. Like for example, what is the case content? It gives such details, case type ID, owner, available actions. So these are the available actions that can be done. These are all kind of local actions. Like you can edit the case detail and then you can change the case stage. So these are all available case wide stuffs, right? So that gets loaded and then who is following and then what are the assignments you have? You have here one assignment, work list assignment, right? And one interesting thing which I already explained to you about the hypermedia as the engine of application state. It means like you can directly refer the links, right? That's what here you can see. Like if you want to open this assignment, you can very well use this as the reference link. So you see href and then you get the details. So by this way, easily your components can go through different APIs. This is the assignment details and this is the action detail. You can see here, right? This is the action if you want to do create or if you want to do the save. So different actions, the flow actions were available. And then you also have the stages, like what are the stages available? And if you want to jump to different stage, you can also very well use the endpoints that you get from here. If you want to jump to second stage, you can use this endpoint. As I told you, get all these details into a single API call. And this React components makes use of this API call and this it just orchestrates everything, display the right actions and everything works perfectly. So this is what I want to show you in this lecture about the reduced number of calls, about the structure, the different structure of version v2 and also these hyperlinks which you get so that you can navigate to different endpoints. In the next lecture we will briefly see about the introduction of new APIs, the list of endpoints which you get exclusively only with the Constellation DX APIs. See you in the next lecture.